three now. Time to um, strap our geek on with uh, Calvin over at thegeekshow.com. Two threes rather than two E's. Uh, good morning to you, Calvin. Good morning, Wamo. And uh, today we're talking about a website called um, Springwise, uh, which has a whole bunch of fresh ideas to get you inspired. Tell us about that. Yeah, I, ca- I came across Springwise um, just yesterday when I was trying to research some interesting things for today. And um, Springwise is fantastic. It's a site, basically, they, um, they crowdsource their stories. They've got 15,000 people spotting for them in over 150 com- countries. And what they publish, basically, are promising business ventures, ideas, and concepts. Huh. Um, so, really, it's just, all of the, these ideas that are in here are businesses that are getting off the ground right now. Yeah. A lot of them, they're looking for venture capitalists and things like that. But it's a great place just to see what fantastic ideas are out there and, and you know, maybe inspire you to, to your own. Okay, cool. What are some examples? Well, flying cars. Who can who can argue with flying cars? What, finally? <laughs> finally, yeah. There's a, a company in the Netherlands um, who've just tested the PAL V1, which is a car and gyroplane hybrid. And now it's not a very big car. It looks like it only takes one person. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a three wheeler car. Um, so it looks a bit almost like a, a streamlined, stretched out Robin Reliant. <laughs> Only I don't think Robin Reliant ever went round corners like this. On the road, it leans into corners. Yeah. So it performs like a sports car. And tucked away on top are all the bits to convert it into an auto gyro. I mean, it does, which is, look, uh, it does look like a mini helicopter, as you say, gyro, mini helicopter on wheels. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly what it is. Hmm. And. Um, Autogyros are a bit dangerous, but you know this thing can be. Um, it, it fits in with the the road license and the road regulations perfectly fine, mm. and um, you'll need a driving license and a sports pilot license or a recreational pilot license, um, and it's going to go on sale for three hundred thousand US dollars. Mm. But for something that you know actually, you know, it does one hundred and twelve miles an hour in the sky. Um, up to 4,000 feet. Uh, you've got to go to an airfield to take flight. Yes. Um, but it has got short takeoff and landing requirements. So, you know, it's, it's fairly fantastic. We're extremely it handy. I, I, all the good things about flying. <laughs> That's right. Extremely handy, I guess, if you lived uh, remotely out in the country and you had an airfield nearby and you needed to c- commute to the city. Yeah, or yeah. a field. Yeah, very cool. Um, but certainly turn heads, that's for sure. All right, what's, a, yeah, what's another example? Oh, an, another great one, and this is just a, a nice little one. It's um, an iPhone app hmm. um, from, once again, from the Netherlands. And uh, its idea is that it's for passengers stuck waiting. And um, what they've done is they've got a range of short stories, all tagged with the average time it takes to read the story. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 45, or 60 minute stories. So you work out how late your train has been delayed yeah. and download a story that's going to last about that amount of time. That's quite cool, because quite often you, you, know, you, you, got to, you want to kill time, and then you go, oh, that's too long, I don't really want to get into that right now. Yeah, but the idea that, oh, my train's going to be half an hour late. Give me half an hour's worth of short story. That's, I, I just think that's brilliant. Wonderful. Because it's so easy to do as well. You just have to tag the story with an approximate amount of time. Yeah. Very nice, okay. And I guess that would be a, um, a good place and a good outlet for authors as well. Not only, a, obviously, a good place for consumers to go, but uh, for authors to sell their works, perhaps. Exactly, especially because you know um, the position the consumer will be in. Mm. They'll be waiting for transport, so maybe there are themes you could bring in yeah. to, to your fiction or to your story which would fit in with that. You know, be quite, I think that's a very cool little idea. Some, something zen, perhaps, to relieve the stress. Yeah. yeah, or maybe a horror story about somebody caught waiting for a train. <laughs> I was like, no, maybe not. <laughs> okay, another example. 
Um, an auction app that connects drivers who are leaving a parking spot with those who are seeking one. Oh. So, uh, in, a, in, a, in an effort to combat waste of time and fuel, you can sell the parking spot you're about to leave to someone who's nearby and looking. Which um, kind of plays on that whole thing. I mean, have you ever gone to a, um, a parking building or, or, or a parking space where you've got to put the ticket in the car and someone will come up to you and um, offer you their ticket, which has sort of 30 minutes left on it? That happened to me the other day. Very, very nice. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had that happen a few times in the past. I, I don't own a car anymore, so yeah, <laughs> that's great for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's a way of making, giving everybody the ability to do that. Just to you know, say, hey, I've got a parking spot coming up in five minutes, and I'm accepting offers um, <laughs> to the highest so, bidder. <laughs> in very busy cities, I can see how that would, you know, that could be a, a really useful app. Yeah. Um, not just useful, but you know, someone with a good parking space might get lucky and find someone who's so desperate for a really important meeting, especially somewhere you know, like, well, this is uh, set for. Um, I mean, this is basically a, a kind of um, focusing on Manhattan's Upper West Side at the moment. Yeah. But you know, any busy city, there'll be rich people somewhere for somewhere for whom that parking spot is worth a lot of money. Exactly, that's very true. <laughs> well, it just shows, shows that on this um, site, Springwise, how how big the market for producing new apps still is, and uh, that bubble really hasn't burst. You've got another one there. Nowhere near. Well, um, this is a, a brilliant one. It's uh, another app that if you snap a photo of some physical junk mail that you're getting in your, your uh, letterbox... Um, it unsubscribes you. It's called Paper Karma, hmm. and um, basically, you send them a photo of a piece of junk mail you'd like to stop re receiving, yeah. and then the software or the people behind it work to make that happen. Um, I think at the moment it's just a, a US thing, but yeah. once again, all of these will spread from their original um, locations. Interesting. Um, I guess it wouldn't work in New Zealand context because junk mail isn't so much sent out by the post. It's just sort of delivered by someone local with a bunch of papers and you have to put the, a sign on your letterbox. But I guess they do it differently there in the States. Well, I, th I think a lot of um, stuff that, you know, once, once they've got your name mm. and your name's been spread around a few things, I think they all have to have an opt-out clause, or, you know, a uh, stop sending me stuff clause. Yeah, right. So it, it's just something that on your behalf will get in touch with the right person for that right bit of mail and say, Oi, stop sending this to me. Nice idea. Nice so, idea. So lovely idea once again. Um, fantastic idea. Hopefully it'll go well as a, as a business. Yeah. And... Uh uh and uh, finally, you've got one more um, that's not an app this time. No, this is um, a, a paint. It's an undercoat for your wall that converts uh, skin contact into electronic control. So it's uh, called on-off paint, and it's a conductive wall treatment. So if you, if you fix this up right, then you could have just areas on your wall or an entire wall that you touch to turn a light on or... Um, Things like that. Amazing. Even up and down. No, no searching in the um, in the dark for that light switch anymore. No, no, just touch the wall and the 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 lights on that wall could come on, which I think is a lovely little idea. I'd imagine no, no good. Not the most. No, no good in a house with um, with kids. The kids would be constantly banging Absolutely on the wall. Not. No, <laughs> they, they'd be doing light switch raves the whole time, wouldn't they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, um, but th I've never heard of that paint that um, conducts. Well, I guess it conducts electricity, does it? Yes, it's a uh, it's a conductive paint, and um, obviously, as you you touch it, it probably changes its resistance or something. Yeah. But the handy thing is, is it's just that it's an undercoat. Um, you can put under another layer of paint, and it will still retain enough, con you know, of its properties to do its job. Hmm. Nice. What a, what a great idea. And I imagine there are a whole bunch more up at the uh, website called springwise.com. And I imagine. Thousands mm, of ideas. Yeah. All separated by type. 
And and these um are, these things actually exist, whether they exist in New yeah. Zealand or not. It's not probably not important, but they exist somewhere at the moment. Yeah, they all exist somewhere, and every idea has got a little flag beside it telling you in which country that this idea has come out of. Brilliant. That is fan- fascinating. Well, springwise.com, and you'll find this conversation as a video once more up at thegeekshow.com, two threes rather than two e's. Calvin, always a pleasure. We'll catch you next time. Okay, catch you next time.